Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, March 20th, 2006. <coughs> this evening, City Council is meeting in regular session. We do have a quorum. Six members of council present. Next item on our agenda is disposition of minutes. We have before us minutes of the special session held February 27th, 2006, <coughs> and a regular session held March 6th. 2006. I move we accept the minutes of uh, February 27th and March 6th. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? I had trouble finding them. I found them this evening. I, I keep looking for the le legal size and not the letter. Oh, okay. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting the minutes is uh, Aye. submitted. Aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been accepted. Communications. I am in receipt of a couple of things. One is a liquor permit uh, that uh, is for a new restaurant that's going to be located close to the mall, Bennigan's. And that is not a transfer. I was told that now if it's a restaurant that they are able to apply for it and be granted a liquor permit without a transfer. If anyone has any objection, uh, this permit application will be with the uh, clerk of council. We also have a, let's see, our second public hearing on our CHIP grant will be held April 3rd at 7 p.m. for those that are interested in participating and hearing about that. And tonight being presented to council on March 20th is the University of States application for annexation. I've been told it has now been in council office for 90 days, and we will give this to the Planning and Development Committee Chair, who uh, hopefully will get this uh, on a committee hearing, and we have 120 days to act upon it. Are there any other items uh, of communication, Mayor Abel? You may have uh, seen the press release that went out uh, oh, a few days ago about the closing of the intersection at South Court Street, Park Place, and Mulberry Street. Uh, that work is all being done by the contractor of the university that's doing uh, Baker Center. Uh, we're just assisting in, in barricading the streets. It'll be at least two weeks, maybe more. I mean, I, I, I'm concerned about that because as you look at it, there's three different levels there uh, coming up from Mulberry, and it's sort of like peaks in the center. Uh, but that work uh, is going on now. Uh, another item is we are, of course, at spring break, and the street sweeper was out this morning uh, nice and early. Uh, but we have had to postpone some work, and it, depending upon what happens tonight and in the morning, we may have to postpone some more. Uh, but we did not do the power washing in the parking garage this weekend because uh, each evening got freezing temperature, and we were concerned that if we were power washing and then it turned to ice, we'd have more problems than we'd like. Uh, so we will reschedule that when we know that the weather will be a little more cooperating on that. The other item I wanted to mention to you tonight, because I know you get questions from your constituents about it, is spring cleanup. It is the last full week in April, April 24th through the 28th. It'll be that last full week, I think, until 2011, if we keep on the same schedule, because then I think Easter interferes and it's going to be the first week in May. Um, but that will be, uh, you would place at the curb that week any number of plastic bags full of trash uh, on your regular pickup day and you will not be charged for any extra bags. If you have larger items to be hauled, they may also be placed at the curb during the week without calling to arrange for a pickup. You will, however, be charged for a uh, standard minimum haul charge of $25 for the first four cubic yards and $3 for each additional cubic yard thereafter. As usual, building materials, tires, and liquids will not be accepted curbside. If you have yard waste for disposal, uh, do the normal calling of the service garage for normal pickup on Tuesdays and Fridays. 
And then once again this year, there will be dumpsters available at the service garage on West State Street. Uh, there will be at least two of them. One will be for scrap metal. Uh, the other will be for trash, so that if you're cleaning on the weekend and your pickup isn't until Wednesday and you want to <laughs> put things in the pickup truck or the back of the car and bring down, you can do that uh, to get rid of it. Uh, they will; Those containers will be someone there uh, at least from 8 o'clock in the morning till 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. There's no charge when you bring it to the service garage and put it in the dumpster. So if you've got an item that would normally have a charge, like a couch or small chest of drawers or you know, any of the things that we would have charged for if we did it at curbside, if you want to haul it down to the service garage, put it in the dumpster, there won't be any charge for it. So that's the basic ground rules uh, for <laughs> spring cleanup and uh, hope a month's notice is enough to get everybody moving. Paul, um, I notice this will be ending just uh, the day before the beautification, so I assume we'll mm -hmm. have some kind of special system set up for hauling, for helping the uh, men's water polo team. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. That's what mm -hmm. I'm We've had a number of meetings with them, and we will have probably a couple of service workers on duty uh, to help arrange for going in with a truck and if it's litter and taking things. But there's a lot of a lot of coordination left to do. We met with the neighborhood associations a week ago today, uh, and asked them that if there was a project in their particular neighborhood area uh, that they the water polo team will make up a list of items that they need, like rakes or hose, and that we, you know, we have a few in the city, but we don't have 50 of them. You know, to disperse around. So we're going to have to ask neighbors uh, to help supply some of those when, when they've identified those needs. So that's what's really going to happen in the next month is a lot of coordination activities. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I did hear uh, about the street sweeper but previously about the bright and early part of it. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> yes. to get the streets clean, I don't mind myself. But just let you know. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> you'll have that. They start early. <laughs> I have a question about the street closing around Park and Mulberry Court. Mm -hmm. um, since that's, I travel that area a lot, and I was there today, and it didn't look like there was much going on, but all the parking meters, you know, the streets were all closed. Is it, you know, necessary to close all of it to parking, or could there be parking on one side of the street? All well, depends upon the, the uh it's usually better to, to close it for the entire period of time because there is always a little bit of mobilization or did I forget something this first day or two, but usually then it, it gets into, it's all, all cleared out. And then if you're ready to do something as a contractor and there's a car there that might be damaged, you just don't, you aren't able to do it. Yeah, I just want to pick those all the way up to uh, that cross street. Well, you always close off to the cross street because you don't want somebody coming down and making a U-turn in the middle of the mm -hmm. street. Okay. Because people will assume, even though there's signage there saying road closed ahead, they go down and test it out. We've, we've tried that over the years, and they do. Mm -hmm. So they're using all those streets? They're used, they're, well, the intersection of it is what's closed. Now, I think that the... Um, south lane of Park Place is open so that those residents that live in through there can get to their homes. Uh, but that's really the only place that we have this week that uh, has residential. The only other residential in the South Court area is this sorority house that's, mm -hmm. that's there. Yeah. Uh, and they have an alternative way in, in the alley by Bentley Hall, uh, mm -hmm. to their parking area in the rear. Yeah, it's just that all those parking spaces are now off limits. It's mm -hmm. hard. Further questions for the mayor? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I did jump past uh, an item on the agenda without asking other members of council if they had communications. Member Phillips. Um, we all received a memo from the Planning Commission, a recommendation for a variance um, for two lots on Carroll Road, and we'll put that on the committee agenda for next time. Okay. Others? No, City no, Auditor? No. Okay. No. Ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 0906, an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 37, 
Landscaping Regulations, Section 37.08, Commercial, Institutional, and Industrial Landscaping. Member Bain. Mr. President. Member Phillips. I move to table 0906. Second. Um, the reason for this motion is that um, the Chamber of Commerce was looking over the ordinance and has some questions they want to discuss with the members of the Tree Commission. Um, we had a conversation and talked about the fact that this has been through committee and through the regular reading, so it's been out there in the public view for a while. So um, I expect this to be very short-lived. They plan to meet on Friday, and I would expect to bring it off the table at third reading in two weeks. We have a motion and a second to table ordinance 0906. Is there further discussion on tabling only? Member Bain. Mr. President, I would like to state my uh, opposition to this tabling for the simple reason that it's a relatively modest change. Many of the things that have been discussed as potential problems with the landscaping ordinance are already in the ordinance. They're not new additions. This is a small one that pertains to improvements to existing property. And um, I've heard rumors that it pertains to a very specific location. And I think it's very bad policy for us to do this. I think if we want to have a variance then to what we think is an appropriate addition to the code, then we should deal with that. I don't think we should be writing or changing or put, pretending to change for th or giving them a, a window of opportunity to pass something through when no one else is involved in it or potentially. And, you know, I don't know for sure that it's happening, but that's what I've heard on the street, so to speak. Um, it's a relatively modest thing, and so I don't know how by, let's say, Monday or even a following Monday, we can change it. So we'll be back to first reading with that. But we still won't have changed the eight-foot eight, eight foot buffer because that's already in the code, the thing that seems to be the most troublesome to them, to them, to the Com Chamber of Commerce, and there's the committee of people who don't live in the city but yet are asking us to do this. And I, I just, I don't think we should willy-nilly do it. If they want changes, then they come back and we go through the process rather than stopping it. It just looks awfully suspicious, in my opinion. Further discussion on tabling of the ordinance only. Member Weil. Um, I am also not into tabling this. Um, this was start put forward um, February 2nd. It's been amended once. It is a small change concerning retro uh, fitting of um, parking lots uh, and areas, <coughs> and we've discussed this quite a bit. Um, pretty much for the same reason Nancy is discussing. And we haven't discussed <laughs> Other comments? Bojinka? Um, I would appreciate um, being um, refreshed on exactly what the issue is in this particular ordinance. This is the ordinance 0906? Yeah, yeah was, I know. Okay. But, and I know that we discussed certain percentage of the property and 50% more, but, but what would be useful is if, if we could have a little more enlightenment on what this actually means. You know, the only thing I would uh, uh, ask the member of council to be cognizant of is that we should at this point be discussing oh, okay. tabling only, but tabling only. just so that okay. uh, you can have an idea of what you're voting at on, I will allow 30 second one minute discussion. Okay, sorry. So renovations that increase the value of the property by more than 50% requires some additional landscaping, right? An existing building, right? Yeah, right, in its renovation. So what is the issue? We have 20 seconds to... Well, I think we need to know what the issue is before we table it because yeah. it'll give someone an advantage otherwise. Is the issue the spacing, the eight feet? I was under the... the well, that's not even in here. So, okay, what is the issue then? I mean, can we, I mean, can we not... I would like... Um, at the risk of letting the debate get away from me, you have one more minute to discuss the issue. The issue is it's third reading, and we're doing it potentially because somebody has a problem with the whole ordinance, and it just seems like it's silly to hold up an, the whole, a small amendment when we have the whole ordinance under discussion. People that don't live here in the city, the, the citizens of the city who are on the tree commission have made recommendations to us, and I... So the amendment would be the same, either we could table it now and amend it later, or we could pass it now and amend it later? 
Well, I mean, amend it. Amend this. If that were, I mean, if that's the, the ultimate goal is to have, they want to amend it. The, well, we're, we've got 25 words that we're changing, that's all. We're not changing any more than 25 words. You know, so what if they have other issues? And are we going to change those too? And we won't be bringing it off the table at third reading because if there's a major, I, you know, my personal preference would be pass it and then let them come back with an amended version if they want to and see if their votes to do it. That would be my pre preference at this point in time. But I haven't been approached by anybody to do this, probably because I've been working too hard. Everybody works too hard. What am I saying? We have now gone <laughs> way over. The, I'm sorry. The one minute. Sorry, no, that's yeah. fine. Member Sands, did you have comments also? I just, I would support tabling because actually I've been, I've supported this ordinance since it was first discussed at the Tree Commission over a year ago. Um, and I've encouraged them to proceed with it. Through that whole time, I don't know that we've heard a word of dissension or concern. We have somebody who has approached us, said they have some concerns about this ordinance, as you said, just this, the 25, this words. 25 words or less ordinance. Um, and that's all we're going to discuss. If, if the discussion proceeds into a wider dis area, then that's off limits because that's not what we're, what we're discussing. So um, I'd be willing to table it, as Councilmember Phillips said, for a short time to hear another side that we haven't heard yet. And that, with that said, that's the reason why I'm comfortable with tabling as well, <coughs> is to allow them to make that connection, talk about it, and work everything out. I know that they've had plenty of time to do it, but I, I understand that. But being a pain in the neck, let me just say that we have read it three or four times because we've amended it. And if they had so many concerns, how come they're not here talking about it? I mean, that, that's just... Crazy. I know, I know, I'm, I see. Oh, well, I mean, it's just, it's pretty late in the game to do yes. it. Mr. President, yes. I would say that the only reason I'm comfortable with this is that the chair of the Trade Commission told me that she's comfortable with this and she's willing to sit down and meet with them on Friday. Um, and she believes that even though it's spring break, that there are a number of Trade Commission members in town and thinks that she can get people to that meeting. So um, if she was not comfortable with that, I wouldn't have made the motion. Member Weil. As the present member of the Tree Commission, since I've been giving that task as the liaison for the City Council, I'm not sure what developments would occur that would change these wordings we have here right now that would make a difference. The only difference I see here is that um, if something goes in for a permitting or an application now in the next two weeks, they would be grandfathered in. And that's the problem I have with this. This is trying to retrofit um, non-conforming parking lots with improve when improvements occur. To my mind, that's not a bad thing regardless of what happens. And one of the statements we always hear about is the fact that many things have been grandfathered in and can't be fixed anymore. This is trying to adjust, uh, address something like this. I don't know what would change this yeah. in the next two weeks that would make it any different. Is there any further discussion on tabling only? Member Bain. Okay, if, um, if tabling wins, then could we um, put together a special session on Monday night Six. and read it Six. and bring it off the table? The only reason that I'm comfortable with tabling it too is that this would happen quickly. If yeah. they would, you know, that they've already been connected, they made, you know, chamber and the tree commission at the meeting. And then I would be in favor of And that it would too. only be on with respect to these 25 Right, boards. yeah, nothing else. I mean, we should hopefully our relationship with the chamber is <coughs> well enough that if we're if this is happening then they would well, we pay for most of their cell phones. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other comments? All those in favor of tabling ordinance 0906. A show of hands. Oh, I'm sorry. All those in favor of tabling. One, two, three. Those opposed? One. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> the first time in six years that you this president gets to. You <laughs> ducked it off the bad one. Oh, God, can I find a conflict? <laughs> <laughs> right now. I uh, have taken part uh, the comments that Member Bain has, has expressed here and Member Weil, and that is if people have objection to this, where are they? Why are they not coming to our microphone and speaking? 
I am not in favor of tabling the ordinance. That dies for lack of a fourth. Mr. President, I move adoption of 010906. It just seems like 1009. Second. <laughs> Um, we've talked about this a bit. There are a very small number of wards involved retrofitting existing buildings and parking lots. I just guess I didn't think it was going to be quite this controversial. Uh, are you finished, with Member Bain? I'm done. Yes. I'm more Member than Phillips. Done. I also think, and I, I was the liaison to the Tree Commission the last couple of years and am greatly impressed with their knowledge and their skill and their willingness to work with people who bring projects forward. And I, I do think that when people have a tight lot or a plan that's hard to work with, the Tree Commission works with them to find something that's going to work on that site. So I do have great faith in their ability to work with members of the Chamber who have a project coming forward. Member Weil. I'd have to agree with Debbie on that. I'm impressed. I've only been to two meetings so far. Um, their breadth of knowledge is, is very good. Their willingness to work with the um, whoever comes in in front of them is very nice too, regardless of what the A News has been saying about their <laughs> protest about the camp station. But at the same time, they try and they work hard and they really think it out. Um, I'm still trying to learn the Latin names. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. And uh, Mr. President, I would like to thing. encourage the members who are talking to continue the discussion and maybe the Tree Commission in their wisdom will decide to change the eight-foot buffer or other things that they find difficult if this passes. If it doesn't, then we'll be back doing it anyway. I mean, I don't think it's a lost cause. I just think it's a timing question. Other comments? Member Sands. I'll just reiterate um, my support for what Council Members Phillips and, and Wild have said about the cooperative effort of the Tree Commission to, to make each recommendation appropriate for the site. Um, I can reaffirm my, my support of this ordinance. If you're not going to table it, then I would certainly vote for it. No. <laughs> Leaving this one alone. My heart's pounding over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Okay. Are there further comments on adoption of Ordinance 0906? All those in favor of adoption of the ordinance? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ordinance has passed unanimously. Ordinance 1806, an ordinance granting variances <coughs> from the Athens City Subdivision Regulations to Wayne Hanning for property located outside the corporate limit but within the three mile jurisdiction <coughs> to allow a minor lot split. Member Phillips. Mr. President, I move adoption of 01806. Second. Um, this ordinance approves some variances um, regarding the lot size of these lots. It's a recommendation from the Planning Commission, and this is due to the changes in the vault controls that require a larger lot size where there isn't um, a curb and gutter for stormwater control. Um, this would allow a smaller lot size, but they are consistent with lots in the immediate area. For further comment. All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 1806? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 1906, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into a contract for the construction of the State Route 682 Union Street Widening Project, number 209. Number Flowers. Mr. President, I'd like to move adoption of Ordinance 01906. Second. Um, this is an ordinance um, entering, this is for the construction project down on 682 Washington Street um, intersection. Um, the total estimated project cost is $805,000, and with that, um, our small cities grant is $6,440,000, and then the city's commitment is $161,000. Um, and the uh, Friday or when the bids open on this project. So, are there any questions on this one? Okay. Other comments? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 1906? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 2006, an ordinance closing a portion of Court Street from Union Street to State Street on Saturday, May 20th, 2006, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the International Street Fair. Number Flowers. 
Mr. President, I'd like to move adoption of Ordinance 0 2006. Um, this ordinance is, this is an annual event, the um, International Street Fair, which will close down the streets um, for vehicular traffic from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on May 20th, and then we'll also ban parking same day from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the International Street Fair. For the comments, all those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 2006. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 2106, an ordinance closing a portion of Union Street from Court Street to College <coughs> Street from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 22, 2006, for streets, I'm sorry, for street fair and celebration of birthday. Again, Member Flowers. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move adoption of Ordinance 02106. Second. Um, this is, again, another annual event that happens in the community for the Earth Day celebration which again will be closing parking um, and vehicular traffic for that portion of the streets on April 22nd um, for the Earth Day celebration. And I'm actually, I'm on the listserv for um, the Earth Day and they've been doing a lot of talking and preparing for this event. So it should be for the community to get out to uh, both these events actually. Further comments? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 2106? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Now, ordinances for separate reading, Ordinance 2506, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a pumper truck and equipment for the fire department, project number 222. Ordinance 2606, an ordinance to extend the tax abatement program for a further period of five years until June 30th, 2011. Ordinance 2706, an ordinance amending Ordinance 0-114-05, establishing fees as required by the Athens City Code. Mr. Member President, Phillips. Um, I move to amend 02706 by substitution. Second. I believe everyone has a copy of the substitute ordinance. We discussed this in committee last week. Um, <clears throat> Again, in trying to get all of the fees located in one place in the code, some of these are not changes, it's just bringing them in. Um, the citations for garbage and rubbish and the citations for litter already exist in the code, but this is bringing them into the section that lists all of the fees, so there's some consistency. Um, there's a small correction with subdivisions to say that there's um, a charge per lot rather than per unit. Um, there's a small correction in the application fees for new construction and alterations to have the flat fee and um, with new construction a three cents per square foot um, and for the alteration permit a dollar fifty per thousand dollars of improvement. Um, those are things that were in the code before but when we made the changes last fall um, <coughs> We lost that piece of it. And then the pieces that we discussed um, earlier about the zoning map amendment, the zoning text amendment, um, and the correction <coughs> for um, $75 per unit for over 10 units in more than one building at one location in terms of the rental permits. So, and this is Pauline, <laughs> who's here with me this evening because she wanted to come with me. So. I wish I had a little girl to stand by me. <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out why everybody was looking at the television. You did about a decade ago, remember, Bay? <laughs> so. so that's the amendment. You have it in front of you, I think. Further discussion on the amendment as presented. The, the member Sam. Just a question, that that last one that you mentioned, the at one location, have we clarified that that says what we need to say there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the problem was that some people interpreted that to mean individual houses scattered across the city, where the intention was if there were a couple of buildings on one lot that had the that number of units. Imagine. So. The creative thinking. Yes, yeah, it was just to clarify our yeah, original okay. intention. We could solve major problems and put it to work on something else. Is there any other discussion on the amendment offered for Ordinance 2706? All those in favor of the of amending Ordinance 2706 by substitution? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ordinance has been amended and now read for the first time. Ordinances for first reading, O-2806, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, to 
enter into an agreement with the state of Ohio for an easement renewal for a water main on land under the jurisdiction of the Ohio Department of Mental Health and declaring an emergency. Member Phillips. Mr. President, um, this and the ordinance that follows are renewal of easements that, that we currently have for utilities um, and authorizing the payment. They're a dollar each. These are really small payments um, for the easements where utilities cross um, other people's land. Do we think we'll balance the budget? <laughs> I think we can probably swing it. Okay. Further comments on Ordinance 2806? Ordinance 2906, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, to enter into easement renewal agreements with the state of Ohio and declaring an emergency. Again, Member Phillips. Mr. President, more of the same, just a different entity. So we got all of these um, from the law director's office. It's just time to renew them. And they are in the council office if anybody wants to look at the existing agreements. And I believe the term of the renewal is 25 years. 15 on the first, and then 25 on the second. Okay. Ordinance 30 is six, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to advertise and accept bids where necessary and enter into contracts for construction of roadway curbs and sidewalks, ramps in the vicinity of the middle school and declaring an emergency. Member Flowers. Mr. President, this is an ordinance for the middle school project that we've been discussing. Um, and this project will, we're wanting to get this put out to bid starting in early May. That way the project gets bidded on, makes up the bid and can get it done, hopefully in time before school starts, um, starts back up. The total cost of the project is um, $330,000 estimated, and then the issue two funds are $203,000 with the local match of $127,000. Um, with all the construction estimates, $274,345. And um, after all is said and done, and we get the um, assessments back on the sidewalk repairs, so the city looks to spend, or lo hopes to spend less than 100000 on it, coming in about under 100000 on the project in total. And so we're putting it through on first reading um, in hopes that we can start authorizing bids in early May. Further comments? Member Weil. Uh, Amy, do you know if we need to spend rules on a second or third, or just no? The, if the way that we've said that this is a, its first reading, we'll be okay to go ahead, and that's why I'd ask the mayor. But we'll we'll be okay. okay. This will go through at the end of April, assuming that no table are amended. Other comments. Ordinance 3106, an, or, an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 11, Chapter 11.05, <laughs> licenses, and Chapter 11.08. Taps. This was introduced by Member Patterson, and I believe Member Flowers will be speaking to it. That is correct. Um, this is the taxi regulation ordinance that Carol's been working on for a while now. Um, and I think um, with uh, Alice Kennedy here last week, a lot of things may have been cleared up with some of the changes in the language. But since then, um, there was another additional email from Ms. Kennedy addressing, um, again, Limousines operating as taxi cabs but being exempt. Does everybody know what email I'm talking about that Alice sent us? Um, she was concerned still about the exemption of the limousines <coughs> lettering, um, the lettering on the limousine. The way I was reading, um, though, the ordinance was that they would still have to have the markings or letterings affixed as long as they were acting as a taxi cab, but if they're acting as a limousine service, then that was not required. And I don't know if there was just a confusion on that. Um, and then there was an also, also another issue with the insurance that I was sure um, Carol cleared up last week, but I, I guess Alice still had some concerns about that. So I guess with that said, I wanted to say that if we um, put this through for first reading, um, that there might be some amendments made at second reading if Carol were to do that. Member Patterson were to do that next, next reading. Other comments? Ordinance 3206, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit a fiscal year 2006 Community Housing Improvement Program grant application to the, to the Office of Housing and Community Partnerships, Ohio Department of Development, and designating Hawking Athens Perry Community Action Agency as the Community Housing Improvement Program grant contract administrator. Member Sands. Uh, Mr. President, you basically said it all there. Um, <laughs> well, um, you, you've also said 
earlier that we will have a um, public hearing for this program, the CHIP program, in two weeks if, before, prior to our council meeting that, that night. That'll be April 3rd at April 3rd at 7, um, where a representative from Tri-County Community Action will, will talk about this program. This would be our application for the third in a series of these, these grants. Um, and after that public hearing, we will need to suspend on this because the application needs to be submitted by April 7. Other comments? Um, Mr. President? Yes, Member Phillips. Do we need an emergency clause on this for it to be submitted immediately after passage? Probably. Um, it's just knew. submitting a grant. We're not appropriating any funds. Okay. That's true. We're not changing the law anywhere. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Ordinance 3306, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit an application and execute an emergency shelter grant agreement with the Ohio Department of Development and authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Good Works Inc. Member Sands. Mr. President, this is an annual ordinance that authorizes the mayor to submit this application for an emergency shelter grant, um, which then is utilized to uh, buy uh, Good Works to to operate their emergency shelter here in Athens. Um, it's really a pass through from the um, Department of Development to Good Works. We act as the agent. Yeah. Other comments? Ordinance 34 is six, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to make application and enter into an agreement for the fiscal year 2006 07 drug abuse resistance education fair. Law enforcement grant, Member Sands. Uh, Mr. President, this is uh, again an annual um, application that we're authorizing the mayor to make. Um, we're asking for funding through the through the Dare grant setup for funds that would provide up to fifty percent of an officer's salary, provided that he um, is uh, in. His responsibilities are related to the DARE program in the local school system. Uh, we've had discussion earlier that in some communities this program has come into question recently, but we feel that in Athens it's a very successful and um, well thought of program, so we'd like to continue with other comments. Ordinance 3506, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit an application and enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Development for a community development block grant for calendar year 2007, federal fiscal year 06. Member Sands. <clears throat> this ordinance would authorize the mayor to submit this application for a CDBG grant, um, which would be available for use next year, 2007. This is not a competitive grant. It's for some money that is available, which in the past has been about $100,000. Um, it's been used for several of the um, new signalization uptown on intersections. Um, Councilmember Phillips suggested this one might, we might consider looking at um, some expenditure for sidewalk improvement in the Stimson area. So we'll talk about that later. Further comments? Ordinance 3606, a long one. An ordinance authorizing the filing of an application with the Ohio Department of Transportation for grants through the U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Transit Administration, FTA, as authorized under federal transit laws as codified 49 U.S.C. Section 3511 financial assistance for other than urbanized areas and funds available from the Ohio Public Transportation Grant Program and Ohio Elderly and Disabled Transit Fair Assistance Program and executing a contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation upon grant application approval for the period from January 1, 2007 through December 31st, 2007. Member Flowers, what does all that mean? 
Well, if I could say more, I would. Um, <laughs> I think you covered it. I, as I understand it, this too also is another annual grant for operating the city's bus system. So. I think you said it a lot more succinctly than I the legalities makes me have to say it. Bill. Yes. yes. Member Weil. Um, this is annual, and this is what finance our bus, uh, finances our bus system. Uh, we put a certain amount in, we get more back from it. Um, it keeps, it's the reason why we even have a bus system in one sense. No comments. Member Sands. I just wanted to point out that the last five ordinances that were introduced for first reading all deal with um, applications by the administration for grant funds, some of which involve some matching funds from the city, but many of them do not, which allows our tax dollars to be spread out much wider than otherwise would be possible, and to um, finance important parts of our infrastructure, such as the bus, bus system. Streets, there. Thank you. Yeah, right, keeping. Thank you for those comments. Other comments? Announcements and other business. Remember, buddy. I have an environmental, I mean, a city services meeting next week. Okay. Well, Environment committee discuss the uh, signage. Signage only? Signage for the hookah and maybe other things. Well, 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 it's in the Clean Air Act area, so we'll discuss that too, I guess. But I'll, I'll start with the signs. Member Bishop. Okay. Um, I'd like to announce another conversation with council next Monday at 6. And Member Flowers has suggested that the topic be parking hang tags. So anyone who is interested in that issue, come at 6 p.m. Mayor's Conference Room next Monday. Member Phillips. Um, I think we need a Planning and Development Committee meeting at least to talk about uh, the variance request and we should put miscellaneous on there too. Well, I think the Planning Commission is talking about this right now. So oh, we'll look right. at it and see if it's time for it to be on our, the annexation request to be on our agenda or not. It may not be quite time. Right. Member. Transportation well, committee, please, next week. We'll call it miscellaneous for now. And I also wanted to echo about the conversation with council. I know that the parking hang parking hang tags issue has come up and came up before I was even on council with uh, Member Patterson and um, Sarah Sexton. And I talked to Sarah and I said that I was going to encourage that that be a conversation with council to get some more dialogue going, um, to hopefully get something put in place to whereas maybe we can test it out this spring while students are still here and it's not working, maybe have the summer to fix it or to do something, but it's a problem and it certainly needs to be addressed sooner as opposed to later. Member Sands. And Mr. President, too. certainly let's schedule a, a finance and personnel. Uh, at this point, it's just miscellaneous. Okay, so oh. Member Bishop again. Communication committee. Communication. Miscellaneous. I don't think we're missing many early. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yes, Kathy. Well, I just wanted to say that um, under finance and personnel, um, we brought up a, a topic last fall and, and really ran out of time to follow through with it at the end of the year about home registrations of occupations in Athens. Um, and I'd like to start that discussion again. You think that should be ready to that too? Well, this, for discussion, I'd like to. Yeah. I actually had a telephone call on Sunday morning from Stephanie Goldsberry was complaining about being ha hassled about that particular topic about cutting her grass and so on and so forth. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear more about it before we... I don't know. Next week sounds like it's going to be a long meeting. Five hours? Seven hours? Right. <laughs> okay. Well, is, we, is the Chamber giving their report next week? Yeah. Were well, we supposed oh, to... No. Um, Kathy talking just reminded me. We were supposed to approve the finance reports for February. I'm sorry, we, we're we going to do that in we two weeks. We, had so trouble we, we decided them not to because people were... Many of us had trouble printing out those reports, so okay. the auditor's office is going to print a copy of the, of the monthly finance report, put it in the council office for us to look at as we used to in the past. And so I didn't print it. We had some trouble six pages of it. That's emailing and printing, so anyway. Member Bain. Um, could we... Who's in charge of liquor licenses, if anyone? Um, I'm a little concerned about the, I'm not, I'm happy Bennigan's is coming in, but um, I guess, but um, if they have a liquor license automatically by virtue of being a, um, a restaurant, would that mean the license would be available as soon as 
they would vacate it if they would go out of business? That is an excellent question that I do not know the answer to. Because we're Maybe supposed we to be geographically hearing. oriented. What we had decided, or I understood we had decided, is that we would announce these, and if anyone wanted a hearing, we could certainly ask for I'll one, or if someone wished to uh, register a complaint with council, they certainly can, and if any member of council would like to deal with it further, that's fine. So, so put clean air in that on my agenda then. Okay, and maybe we can get some more information. I on, will try. Uh, how this type of permit works. Member Phillips. On the question about the Chamber's annual report, I'm going to talk with the clerk about this, what the overall agenda looks like next Monday, and talk with Jennifer at the Chamber. Um, it looks like there's a lot on the agenda, it so sure it does. might make sense to wait a little longer. I don't want us to be here till 11 o'clock. Yeah. That's hard. I can agree. A lot of committees are meeting, but I'm not too sure there's many items for most of them. So. Just <laughs> four. Well, there's. We've, we've been duly warned by <laughs> Member Bang. <laughs> Further discussions. Now that opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services that have not been covered on tonight's agenda. And we see before us a spectre. Don Vivon, man about town and about the world, he's former back. member of he's council. Back. He's back, he's tanned, he's fit, he's ready. What a pleasure it is to be here in front of council and former colleagues. And your name is? Scott Hunter, 32 West address? Simpson Avenue. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yes, it's uh, fun to be back and see everything's going well in the city. and. Uh, Spending uh, some of my time south in Myrtle Beach, I do come back several times a year uh, for, for work and different items. Um, I have two items I'd like to briefly discuss with council. Um, first one being litter. I kind of came up because I noticed the other day I was watching Flipping the Channels and Wonderful Channel 23. Um, I'm not sure if it was Mrs. Baines meeting the other day. No, I don't think so. The, uh, you're talking about litter. Yeah, who's in mine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, it, it, it took my eye, um, and I, I watched for a little while. Um, as many of you know, being on council many, many years ago, I, I pushed for something to be done better with litter. Uh, I did several citywide pickups. Obviously, they, they're nice when they're done, but they don't last too long. Um, I worked on a, on a program to maybe hire a part-time person in the city, have that person work with maybe jail offenders or welfare, people receiving welfare, uh, to try to do a regular maintenance program. Um, basically, I would say that it failed because of the unions, I think. Um, just like parking, 15 years ago, uh, we had a serious problem, and for years and years and years, really nothing was done. Then it progressed, the problem got worse, so it became a part-time situation with residents and people on the streets calling about certain cars uh, and many of you know the history so the police would come up and tag cars and then they would ticket and tow and but the enforcement really wasn't enough to fix the problem so then during um, my council time as well as bias and vain i think we put together bill a, a wonderful program that's worked in the city that has helped the 24-hour. We took a lot of the eight-hour meals and turned them into two. We raised the fines, and I think it is really addressed, uh, and I know sometimes it's inconvenience for residents, but it has really addressed the problem. And I think, I think we do probably what we can for what we have, and it's the best that we, we have. I think that's probably a, a pretty good assumption. I'm, anyways, being a member of council, I'm proud of, of that ordinance that went through during, during my tenure. Um, litter is the same thing. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And to me, it does seem like a reasonably easy fix. Um, there's more trash, there's more people, um, and in certain neighborhoods, let's just face it, it seems like there's more and more lack of respect, there's more and more <laughs> lack of responsibility, um, and I don't see the problem going away. Um, I know, and it seems like it's going down the same road as parking. So now there's been some fining, but it's really not enough. I think it's time the city takes a, uh, a full-time approach. 
to a full-time person um, and let's put the effort and the blame where it should be. Let's, let's not make the beer cans or the beer companies responsible for the beer cans that line the streets. Let's not make the cigarettes companies responsible for the cigarette buds that line the street. Let's not make the pizza companies responsible for the boxes that line the streets. Let's not make the professors responsible. Let's not make the landlords responsible for the tenants that have a 200 cup party and the, the, the cups are blowing around the city streets, you know, for a week at a time. Let's not make Rubbermaid responsible for trash cans that they made that are sitting out in front of our city curbs for three or four days. Um, what we need is a full-time person. <clears throat> I would suggest someone who works maybe half and half in the uptown uh, franchise district working on the sidewalks. Um, when I put together my program, I personally went uptown one morning at 4 a.m. with a backpack blower and, and blew off all the city sidewalks on uh, Court Street and the surrounding areas, working with the street sweeper. Um, didn't get any complaints waking people up. It seemed to be a wonderful program. I had banks and uptown merchants donating money. I had checks in hand for a program that was going to go forward. I had uh, People's Bank donating a backpack blower, you know, for $500. I had people donating this and people wanting to see this program going forward, uh, which unfortunately never did. Um, hopefully, maybe something can get put together in the uptown area. We have now a wonderful street scrape, but just like a car that's been fixed up, if it's muddy, dirty, and trashed, it's really not very presentable. It seems to be the same thing is happening here with litter in the uptown area. It really has come a long way and not having streetscape go through city council when I was on council, something we just talked about and fought over and we couldn't decide. I'm really proud of the councils after me that have put together. Some of you people have worked on it. It really does look nice uptown. Uh, but obviously litter is a big problem. Um, then we don't need to talk about what's going on in the Mill Street area and different areas. You know. Cans are on the, on the porches. Cans are in the front. I, you know, I thought about taking a bunch of pictures and coming up, but we know what's going on. There's just cans. You know, they don't take them back to the back of the houses. It's just it's going to continue to happen forever. Education is not the answer. A lot of people, I'm sorry to say, just don't care. When I was here in September, as I come for four weeks uh, to work on renting some of my rental properties, I stopped by a house where they'd had a party <clears throat> and I gave them a big speech as I do all my tenants uh, when I sign and I, in September I go around and educate and try to do an above average job as a landlord. And so I knocked on the door and said, hey, you're going to have to come out and pick your litter up or I'm going to charge you $20 to do it. And they said, well, that would be great if you do it, Mr. Hunter, and if you could stop back next week, that would be great, too. They just <laughs> don't care. The $20 really meant nothing to them, especially because it was coming out of someone else's money that was for the deposit. So next week, a big party happened to that house, and so I went up and educated. Well, it just so happened the code office the very next day came up and wrote them a ticket. I'm not really sure how the code office found out about it, but they came up and wrote my tenants a ticket. Then I got a call from the tenants. It was wonderful. They came up, they wanted to know the whole program, how it worked, what do we need to do. It opened their eyes. But since then, no ticket, you know, not a lot of pressure from the city. And, you know, once again, it's fallen into a trashy environment and I had to go around and hound them again. So it seems to me that a full time person, right, full time tickets, you know, after two or three tickets of 40, 50, 60 dollars. What is it now, if I may ask? It's actually increasing over time. It goes first offense 20, second 40, third 60, fourth 80, okay. fifth, and subsequent 100. All right. I've so we've been it. trying to do this. Thank you so much. And I, and I know you have. And I, and I wanted to make the correlation between parking because when we made our move bill to the full time situation, the part time thing just wasn't working. And I think if we just go full time with this, I think we have it in place in September, and I think it could be a whole new thing for Athens. A cleaner, litter-free, or mostly litter-free Athens would just be wonderful. 
And I know for 15 years, guys, we've been talking about doing something, and we really haven't put together a very good program. It's just the part-time thing's not going to work. Um, I did enjoy talking to Ray, this assistant safety service director. He has a lot of fine ideas. Um, I liked his idea of an uptown franchise tax on maybe the water bill to raise some revenues. And obviously, if the, if the tickets are a little more substantial, uh, $20, might open their eyes, but they're not going to really pay much attention to it. But I guess when the, the second and third and fourth one come, I guess they will. Um, we know we raised $60,000 for uh, chalking tires and writing tickets for 24-hour parking violations. I'm sure tickets on this would surely pay for that position as the same thing as the parking thing did that appears to be so successful, even though we're talking about hang tags, not really sure what's going on there, but we talked about that during <laughs> oh, yeah. our administration. People are complaining about the tickets. People are complaining <laughs> about the tickets. Well, you know, hey, I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Move your car. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. I, well, it's well. a little bit of a different situation, but sure. Right, okay. No, pay, pay the ticket. Take so anyways, um, you know, I, I know that we're working on, I'm just gonna encourage that my experience as a landlord and having 50 units, um, Hey, I know that uh, the minor amounts and the constant hounding that I do and my guy does, my maintenance guy does, really is minimally ineffective. It's amazing how much I really try to educate, even with flyers on the refrigerator when they come in, going above and beyond what most landlords probably do, providing the city information to them, the, the uh, trash pickup days, you know, expressing the curb cans to the front and to the back you know, on the days and you know even seeing a tenant walk by a trash can once um, and stop them saying hey why didn't you get that and they walk right past it into the you know, portion of the house and it's, the answers are just so I have uh, I have one more item um, as a member of City Council for eight years I uh, sponsored and supported many apartment complexes. I uh, went to the uh, Planning Commission meeting last week. Um, I guess uh, the new project on Stimson, on uh, Landmark, I'm not, I'm not opposed to apartments in that area at all. I think probably that is what should go there. I am opposed to a seven and a half story parking tower in an area where there are only two-story houses and buildings everywhere. And I, I, I seem to get different answers from people, but imagine this parking garage starting at the rooftops of the houses and the buildings in that area, because that's how it would look. The scale that the gentleman brought to the meeting is completely out of whack, and they're shooting it from a the sidewalk, you know, having the bank block the whole thing. There's no way that thing's to scale. But really try to picture what this thing would look like starting two stories up on the top of rooftops because that's how it's going to stick out. Um, and if we're, if we're going to start going with high density projects in certain areas, then we should certainly all be able to do that. Uh, this thing, according to the gentleman, had a 56% lot coverage. I don't think that's true in the garage. They said it was, but I really doubt that. Um, the setbacks, the, the height of being four stories higher than it should be and everything else, uh, you know, along with some of the other traffic concerns and everything else. But I'm just really opposed to the garage. I just can't imagine that a garage is going to look attractive in that area. But once again, I'm not, I'm not against apartments in the landmark area at all. I think that's 100% what it ought to be. No question there. So. This, this was made up, uh, it's kind of like a little fact sheet. Um, it was made up by someone else, and I got a copy of it during the Planning Commission meeting, and I photocopied them. There's obviously some big things I'll never read and find out about it, but I hope everyone gives it uh, good thought when, they're, when this thing comes around before them. So I appreciate your time. It's a pleasure being here and seeing old faces. And um, I don't know, Bill and Nancy, maybe the, uh, the hair colors have changed and me getting off council is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you guys are all listening. doing good work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. Todd. It's great seeing you again. Uh, were there any comments that any council member would wish to make in response or in report to any of the comments that were just made? Seeing none and having addressed all items on our agenda tonight, we stand adjourned.